My name is Amy Courtney and I work with Dr. Mark Pickering in the School of Medicine in UCD. This video aims to show primary school teachers how to use an online science resource that we have developed, known as Jelly Lab Online. Ireland's primary school science curriculum aims to foster a child's curiosity while also developing an understanding for the scientific process. This includes observation, measurement, hypothesis testing, problem solving and asking questions. This resource was developed with this ethos in mind. The goal of this resource is to equip primary school teachers with real world scientific data to use in their classroom. We think this resource can be used to demystify the scientific process, which often seems like a formal set of rules, but we think this is something anyone can do intuitively. The scientific process involves making an observation, generating a hypothesis, and testing that hypothesis. But if you strip away the terminology, this basically amounts to looking at the world around you, asking a question about how it works, making a guess of what the answer could be, and then testing your guess to see if you're right. We hope we can provide you with the tools you need to explore these ideas with your class in an easy to implement and fully accessible manner. We think that the type of science we do in our lab lends itself to demonstrating this process in a fun and easy way. Therefore, we thought we would package our observations into videos for teachers to use. We have put together four videos and an example worksheet. However, the beauty of this resource is that it is totally flexible and can be adapted to meet the needs of your class. Over the next few minutes, I'll take you through the videos and the example worksheet and explain one way in which we think this resource could be used in a classroom. As a way to introduce you and your class to this resource, we will start with some simple observations. In video one, we show how brine shrimp are attracted to light. The students can observe this phenomenon in the video, but we want them to explore whether they see any difference in how the brine shrimp respond to different colours of light. In other words, can they see colour? First, they will see four colours tested separately, but displayed simultaneously in the video. Then they will be shown a clip of brine shrimp being shown all four colours simultaneously. Your class can come up with ways to measure which colour the brine shrimp are most attracted to. We suggest that they count how many brine shrimp are in each quadrant of the circle. The next video leads us into experiments that we conduct in our lab on a day-to-day -day basis and more closely resemble real-world scientific data. Video 2 aims to give you and your class some basic information about comb jellies. We don't want to bombard you with information. We want to give you the minimum information required to enable your class to engage with these animals and develop their scientific skills. Most people are unfamiliar with these weird and wonderful animals, so we want to start by introducing what they look like. We think getting the class to draw a picture of them and maybe labelling the different body parts would achieve this. We then introduce the scientific question. How does a comb jelly get through from the tentacle into the mouth? The comb jelly can't direct the tentacle into the mouth. They can only pull it in or out. You also have to remember that they have paddles all over their body that they use to swim in different directions in the water. So using this information, your class can use their imagination and predict how they think this could happen. This essentially mirrors a part of the scientific process where the scientist generates a hypothesis, which is basically just an educated guess. We would also suggest making a simple model of a comb jelly, 
with a balloon, sellotape and twine. This can be used to help your class come up with ideas for their best guess as to what happens when calm jellies feed. The answer to this question is that the calm jelly has to spin their entire body around to enable the tentacles to passively drift by their mouth and then they can gobble up the prey. Ten examples of calm jellies feeding can be found in video three. The way in which the comb jelly gets the food from the tentacle into the mouth is surprising and we want your class to compare what they thought would happen with what actually happened. The final comb jelly, comb jelly 11, shows what happens when they have a brine shrimp on both tentacles. This is an extra bonus to see if your class can guess if they will spin twice. The students can then watch all 10 examples again and this time count how many spins occurred for each comb jelly. They could calculate the average spins and they could display the results on a graph. Video four looks at another interesting behaviors the comb jellies do. When you touch them, they quickly swim away. This is called the escape response. Again, the students can try to predict what will happen and then observe what actually happened and compare the two. The interesting element of this behaviour is that they don't have one reaction to touch, they actually have three. They either swim up, swim down, or don't respond at all. The first time your class watches this video, they can just simply describe what they see. You can watch it a second time once the true reactions have been identified and then tick the box in the table which best describes the comb jelly's reaction. They could use these results to draw a bar chart too. Once you and your class have watched all the videos, hopefully your students will be full of curiosity and full of new questions. You could ask them to research their questions online or in a book as homework, or you could encourage them to design their own experiments or come up with new hypotheses to answer all their new questions. To reiterate, everything that I said here is merely a suggestion. You are the expert on the dynamics of your class and the capabilities of your students. So you can use this resource in a way that you see fit. We hope that you find it useful. and We hope that we've made it as easy as possible for you to implement. We would love to hear how you get on with it. We would really appreciate your feedback in the form of an online questionnaire, which only takes a few minutes to fill out. We will use your responses to improve this resource and to build upon it and develop more scientific material for primary school teachers. If you have any questions or suggestions, please do not hesitate to contact myself or Mark. Thank you.